said I'd shoot a, a video of my setup down here in my basement. Uh, this is a dedicated room I'm in. It's uh, 28 deep by 14 wide. Um, I've had a couple people inquire or kind of be curious about my setup um, on a couple different uh, blogs that I'm on because I've got uh, kind of a unique setup, something you probably don't see every day. So uh, it's Friday, I'm off work. I'm supposed to get a snowstorm later, so I thought this would be a really good day to uh, kill a little time uh, shooting a video and I'll, uh, I'll try not to put you guys asleep and I apologize up front for the low production values. This is just me and an iPhone, so uh, take it for what it is, but I'll do my best. So I'll start in the back room. This is right behind the screen wall that you just saw me standing in front of. Uh, I put this in a back room just to kind of keep it out of the way, give me a little more space in the other room. So I've got everything fed through the walls. Um, so that is my AV receiver. It's a Marantz AV8802. Just a little monitor on top in case I running you know some kind of setup it's just easier to read it off that screen than off that little bubble window on the Morans. and then recently i you know i've always been a two channel guy primarily believe it or not probably 70 75 percent of what i do in that other in the other room i'm going to show you is uh just two channel audio um probably you know i listen to music literally every day in that room movies maybe once a week or so so since I'm into audio so much, um, that is a Balanced Audio Technology VK33 Tube Preamp. Um, so what I do is I, if I'm um, just listening to two channel, um, I plug my amplifier um, into that, into that process, or the, I'm sorry, the preamp. And if I'm watching movies or listening to multi-channel music, I just pull the XLRs out of the out of that preamp and hook, put them back into the Marantz. It takes like 10 seconds. So to me, it's no big deal. And then coming down, it's a six channel amp for my ceiling speakers. It's an NAD or NAD. I'm not sure um, what they call those. A couple power conditioners, an Xbox, and then a five channel Rotel amp all the way down on the bottom for um, my center channel and two sets of side speakers. And then over there is a B and K amp. I ran out of shelf space, so I just put it down there and that runs my rear channels. So I'll go out into the other room now. Before we go into the main theater, I just thought I'd show you some of my other little setups down here. This is a uh, two channel setup in my little pool room. Got an old school Marantz receiver down there. I had a uh, Rotel amplifier that I picked up, used uh, really cheap. Um, that I wasn't using for anything, so I'm, I'm using that to uh, amplify the speakers down here. And then I've just got some, um, God, I don't even remember, oh, Onyx that went on a business a while back. That's, uh, that's those speakers there. And then around the back, I picked up some uh, old school Infinity speakers that still sound really good. The foam on them is still intact. So there's the other one there. So that's it for that room. There's an old uh, Sears Silvertone um, console stereo. I'm going to guess late 60s, early 70s. I uh, bought this off a woman who wanted to give it to me, but I wouldn't take it for free. Um, I think I gave her 35 bucks for it. But the electronics in it, the speakers in it were all shot, but I just like the way it looks. So I gutted it. I put some um, bookshelf speakers in those cavities. And then up in here... I removed the turntable since it didn't work anyway, and then I put um, a little uh, Mono Price uh, Hybrid Tube Amp in there. Um, so if I'm running it, I keep the uh, top open so it doesn't overheat. So uh, anyway, that's that. I suppose I could have had it restored to its original parts, but um, I just like tinkering with things and making them my own, so that's what I did with that. And then over here is... I call it my lounge area. Usually if I'm watching sports, especially with friends, I'll come down here for uh, that. That's a 65 inch uh, 
LG TV, and then I've got, you know, a little uh, 7.1 surround setup for that. And then uh, here's one of the turntables that I'm running. Um, actually, in that room I was in before, I had if, uh, an old linear tracking um, turntable in that room, and then I have this is a uh, Denon turntable out here. I still have a pretty big vinyl collection from when I was in high school and afterward before CDs came out. So I still like to spend some vinyl every once in a while. So, I mean, it's just my bar area to hang out in. So I will go into the, uh, to the main room now. So these double doors lead into the, uh, to the theater. Alexa, turn theater lights bright white. can actually see. So right now that's that uh, balanced audio technology amplifier, or I'm sorry, preamp, the tube-based one that's playing. Aerial Acoustic 7Ts. What I did was um, the Martin Logan subs I actually have connected to the um, to the balanced audio preamp as well. It has XLR outputs and uh, regular RCA. So I've got those hooked up to the RCA outputs and I kind of tuned them to blend with my early acoustic uh, 70s there. And then uh, to power the 70s, those are Musical Fidelity M8 700s. Again, I'm not a professional, right? Um, it's uh, those are mono block amplifiers, uh, 700 watts per channel. Um, and I did check with the uh, people over at Ariel just to make sure that um, I wasn't going to destroy the speakers with that kind of power output. And uh, they assured me I wouldn't, as long as I didn't go like I'm living in a frat house and turn it up to 11 or anything. I should be fine. I really like them a lot. Uh, extremely low noise floor uh just they just sound terrific to me so a lot of this stuff i picked up used almost everything either used or dealer demos the speakers i got used all of them the subwoofers were either all used or dealer demos uh, so i sell myself saved myself a lot of money that way and those are even those mit shotgun speaker cables you see same thing dealer demos like half price that's Air Aerial Acoustic 7, or not 17, when I was saying CC3 center channel speaker. I've got an Oppo BDP-105 and this little power conditioner over there. And then that's a 120 inch uh, silver ticket screen right off of good old Amazon. And then of course, as you can see, I've got some uh, acoustical panels behind there. I've, I've tried to make this uh, um, room very geared towards two channel as much as I can with the uh, knowledge that I have which isn't super great but those are uh, also reflection panels that I had um, they weren't custom made but um, they're special order I can't remember the name of the company I got those from but uh, that's again to help with the acoustics in the room and then um, so Coming back towards the side wall over here, here's my first row of seats. And just off to the left is my little uh, two channel hub. It's just an HP laptop, a uh, project turntable, a uh, Sony HAP Z1ES uh, server. Just let me just power that thing up real quick if I can remember how. <laughs> So used to using a remote on that. I forgot where the power button was. And then just an old school JVC um, DVD CD player underneath that. And then uh, everything that is, everything you see in this area is all running through that MyTech Brooklyn DAC Plus. It does MQA. Um, really, really like that unit. I couldn't be happier with it. Um, and it also has a phono preamp in it, which is nice because then I don't have to run a separate 
um, connection back to the uh, to the other room. I can just plug everything into that, and it's kind of like a one-stop shop, if you will. And then I just have a monitor up here hooked into the HP, so my old eyes can see everything a little bit better from my seat. And then I just have a wireless keyboard hooked up to the HP, so I can just scroll through music and stuff. I pretty much use that HP as just the music server. I almost never go online with it. And um, so there's my first row of seats right there. So I've got my uh, first set of side speakers basically flanking that. And then my second row of seats right there. And uh, there's my second row of uh, side speakers. Had to put them a little bit farther back just because of the way the doorway is, but it's still, it still is good because as you can see, there's, well you can't see it because the grill covers around, but there are speakers. Um, there's a mid and a tweeter on the uh, that side, a mid and tweeter on the back side, and then uh, like a mid woofer on the, on the flat part in the front there. Now, uh, one thing I, I'd like to mention is that thing that looks like a big white hockey puck, that is the Google Wi-Fi. I was having terrible dead spots in here on my Wi-Fi, dropouts, all kinds of stuff, and uh, went to buy a spy and was ready to buy some kind of Nighthawk router, and uh, the kid there asked me what my problem was. I told him, he said, uh, pick up Google Wi-Fi, you will not be disappointed. Man, was he right. This. I got the three pack. Um, I have 100 meg service at home. Every time I do a speed check, I'm at least 100 meg on these things. They, I've never dropped out, never anything. So if you're looking for something really solid for your Wi-Fi at home, couldn't recommend those enough. It's really great. Then coming back around to the back, I used to have all definitive technology speakers some years back. And rather than uh, trying to sell these things and recoup what I could from them, which I don't know, they're so big and bulky and it would be a son of a gun to try and ship those things weigh over 100 pounds. So I just hung on to them. So those are both our rear channel speakers that you see there. And again, there's my other sides. So um, they're all being powered off that uh, one of the amps in that other room that you saw where I initially started off. And then uh, I have two, two of the bigger Martin Logan subs back here. Now those are hooked up to the LFE channel, whereas the, uh, the front two that you saw are hooked up just to full range. And uh, the speaker, the subs up front and these both have full range and LFE inputs. So that's how I have them configured. So, um, so the other um, thing that I did back here is when I planned out this room, I did not know where all the furniture was gonna go initially. So, these are my rear um, Atmos height channels, whatever you wanna call it, and they're pretty far back. They're only maybe three, four feet from the rear wall. So when you're sitting in my front row, you couldn't hear them. I mean, you could, but just barely. And then, up here are my fronts, which was fine for the front row, but not so good for the back row. <laughs> so my solution after I, after all this was built, it was a little tricky, but I managed to pull it off, was I put another set in. So what I did was, I don't know how well you can see it, but those are angled. So you can see that one is angled towards the front row, and it's hooked up to the front, no, I'm sorry, the rear right Atmos channel. Now this one is angled towards the back and that's hooked up to the front left Atmos channel. And how I did that was that's a six, I have a six channel NAD amp that was in that other room. And I have XLR and RCA. So the, the two in the front and the two in the back are hooked up to the um, XLR outputs and these two are hooked up to the RCA outputs. I just love coming up with solutions for things like that. So, um, I've been tinkering with audio equipment since I was a kid. My dad was a huge 
um, music lover, and um, I am too. I just love experimenting. That's why I uh, gutted out that uh, console you saw in the other room and kind of uh, updated the electronics and the speakers a little bit. Um, so that's just my passion. I, I love love monkeying around with this stuff, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't give some love to the projector up there. It's an um, Optima HD 33. It's 1080p. Uh, it does 3D. I do watch 3D once in a blue moon, just you know, just for shits and giggles, if you will. So uh, I guess I'll end it there. I guess I. Again, I don't want to bore you guys to death too much. And this isn't the first video I've shot of this room. So uh, if you guys have any questions or want to comment, you know, obviously feel free. And uh, I'll end it there. Thanks again.